Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us for this presentation of the 2022-2023 year and financial results. As you know, this year was particularly marked by a, a difficult economic context and and the general slowdown in the economy and in, an increase in the inflation rates and the significant rise in interest rates. Despite these challenges, I am delighted to inform you that our group has achieved very encouraging financial results. If we address the overall economic context, the economic slowdown has been felt on a global scale, impacting many sectors of activity. Additionally, the rising inflation rates has created cost pressures, which has been an additional challenge for many businesses, including ours, and the one of our customers. Not to mention the pressure that we had on the labor costs and on the maintenance costs. In this context, our group had to face difficult market conditions, particularly in the two key sectors for recycling, with which we are closely linked, construction sector and automotive industry sector. These two sectors have experienced a crisis with a significant drop in production. We have focused our of efforts on operational efficient efficiency, cost reduction, and diversification of our revenue sources. Hence the important capex amounts of this fiscal year. Regarding the short term outlook of the, our group, we are optimistic despite the current challenges. Several positive elements point to significant improvements in results in the coming quarters. The first one, we are seeing an encourage, encouraging signs of demand of steel, which is coming from, I mean, everywhere in Europe and Asia mainly. Another uh, factor or driver, the reduction in energy costs constitutes another element fa uh, favor to our uh, financial performance. Our strategic investments made over the past years are starting to bear fruit and we are witnessing the successful startup of activity resulting from these investments, which contributes posit positively to our results. These initiatives were focused on diversifying our revenue streams and creating new business opportunities, and we are now seeing the first benefits of these strategic decisions. In conclusion, Although the economic context is still marked by uncertainties, we are confident in our ability to capitalize on emerging opportunities, the short term outlook promising, and we will continue to work with determination to strengthen the group's market position and ensure sustainable growth. Thank you for your attention, and I will leave the floor to Pierre Condolier, the group CFO, and we will be happy to answer your questions uh, after the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abderrahman. Uh, I will now uh, present the results for the 22-23 financial year. Uh, first, a few issues about uh, comparability of accounts. Uh, you know that we had a number of events this year. Uh, the first of one is the contribution of the multi-service division to um, Elior Group on April 18th. It, um, it means that our 2022 financial statements, at least the PL, is restated at the net income from the Richbourg multi service is disclosed on a separate line as well for the first half of, of this year. Uh, <clears throat> after this contribution, uh, we have um, we disclose a new segment information uh, with uh, two uh, main segments, which are recycling and service to municipalities. And also we provide retrospective information with this segment. And the third impact of uh, comparability of accounts is the accounting of ECOR, which we acquired uh, in December 2021. Of course, we consolidated last year ECOR on 9.5 months and this year on 12 months. Um, we had to sell some what we call remedies uh, be because we com committed to sell these remedies um, to in front of the European Commission 
in order to be authorized to uh, acquire ECHO. And we have disposed eight yards on uh, in January 23, which means that they were consolidated last year on 9.5 months and this year only on three months. <clears throat> so a few metrics about the group. Uh, this year we achieved 3.6 billion revenue, a 3.4 in the recycling division and 200 million in the service to municipalities division. We achieved uh, 335 million uh, EBDA. We sold 5 million for 157 tons of, of ferrous and non-ferrous metal, uh, which is a decrease by 5.7%. Uh, we will go into details after, yards, after that. Uh, the group is active in uh, 11 countries, nearly 6,000 employees, uh, which are 4,000 in the recycling division and uh, less uh, than 2,000 in the service to municipalities division. And we operate in the recycling division nearly on 300 sites. So the context on which we operate, uh, as Abderrahman explained, it's a context of uh, uh, which is more difficult than in two prior years in economy and which translated in slower or reduced steel production in nearly uh, all areas and in particular in the area in which we operate, uh, which are, I would say, Europe, uh, USA and Turkey, which also impacts our the steel market. If you look, uh, all this area are declining, uh, nearly 10% um, in the US, 11% in Europe, uh, nearly 10% in Germany, over 12% in Turkey. These are the 2022 figures compared to 2021. We will have later in the presentation figures about 23 at the end of September, and you will see that the metrics are nearly the same. However, uh, if the if the there was a declining trend, we can we we consider that based on uh, our figures in the recent months that we may have reached a support or a plateau, and that the figures are not declining anymore, and uh, which is a good news. If we go now in the into the figures, uh, the turnover for the group for the year 2023 is a 3 billion 600 million 21 uh, euro, uh, which is a decrease by 16.7% compared to prior year. Uh, the current EBITDA is 334.8 million euro, which is a decrease of 27.1%. Uh, the current EBIT uh, is 184.9 million euros compared to 328 last year, uh, which is a decrease by 43.6%. Uh, the EBITDA ratio is 9.2% uh, and the EBIT, current EBIT ratio is 5.1%. Uh, uh, you will see in the detail after that that most of the variation comes from recycling business, uh, which is the most profitable of the group, but which is also a bit more volatile than uh, service to municipalities, and most of the variations come from that business. Um, we have a, a number of uh, non-recurring items. You have the details of which in appendices to the presentation, uh, which have a positive impact, roughly 60 million. Uh, the main one is non-cash. We had a, a profit of uh, 50 million euro when we contributed the multi-service business to Elio. Uh, we had a 12.6 million euro uh, profit when we sold our yards uh, in January, the remedies yards, and uh, it was, of course, in the H1 uh, results. The 50 million was not in the H1 results. And we also had uh, a loss of 3.7 million euro, which was already in H1 uh, due to a litigation in the service to municipalities division. We have increasing uh, finance costs by 9 million, uh, which is due to increased rates. Um, and the finance cost is 29.6 million euro. Uh, as we have a lower EBT by 30%, we have a lower income tax, uh, which is uh, 44 million euro. And um, a line which is, I would say, new, not new, but new by, by its magnitude in our financial statements, 
is the share in net res in results of equity consolidation companies, which is negative by 37 point, uh, 7 million euro. And in that figures, uh, 39 come from Elior, who will go into the details after that. The net income from uh, continued business is 131.8 million euros, which is 40% less than uh, prior year. Net income of discontinued activities is 5.6 5 million euros, the same figures than in H1. And the net income attributable to shareholders is 166.9 uh, million euros. Um, the board of directors, which uh, took place this morning, uh, proposed to the IGM to pay a 60 cent dividend per share. So we will start, uh, go first in the recycling business. The revenue turnover is uh, 3, 3 billion 400 million 28, 428 million, uh, which is 17.8% compared to last year, less compared to last year. Current EBDA is 315.8 million euro, which is 29.2% uh, less than last year. The EBDA ratio is 9.2. And the current EBIT, it's a magic of figures. It's exactly the same than the, the current EBIT of the group, which means that um, the current EBIT of uh, service to municipalities and uh, of holding offsets. Um, so, and the current EBIT is uh, 5.4%. Uh, you will see in the current coming page um, that uh, we have a decrease in volumes. We have a decrease in uh, unit margins by 11, 12 percent, uh, which is, I would say, the same metrics, uh, both for non-ferrous and ferrous metal. Uh, but our margin, unit margin, are still higher than uh, historical average, which is a good thing. And also a key feature for, for this year is the additional cost, uh, mainly for electricity, uh, which we can consider uh, as non-recurring for the increase, which impacts uh, the EBITDA in France by uh, 19 million euro and the uh, 19 million it's just for nine months because the increase started in January. Uh, we, the good news is that uh, nearly all that increase will be offset next year. We have a few more details uh, in the co com coming pages. The prices. Uh, so you see that uh, after uh, 2022 year, when we reached uh, record levels for all commodities, the prices for this year are lower. Uh, but nevertheless, they are good prices compared to a historical average. But uh, they were. We had a second half where we had prices which were a bit lower than in the first half. Um, the the curve do do not go until November. But uh, for ferrous uh, scrap uh, from November on, I would say, we see an increase in prices, at least on the export markets, uh, by 20 to 30 euros. So the volumes. Uh, the volumes of ferrous scrap decreased by 5.8%, and for non-ferrous metal by 5.2%. Uh, if we go into more details, uh, last year, we sold nearly 5 million tons of uh, ferro scrap. Um, we have a full year impact of the ECOR consolidation. Uh, last year, uh, during the time where we did not consolidate them, they did uh, 437 tons, uh, thousand tons of ferro scrap. The remedies um, last year, they had they done uh, 155,000 tons, which means that we have a market change of uh, 568,000 tons, which is 11.5%, uh, uh, which is indeed consistent with the change in steel production in uh, Europe, uh, which is decreased by 12%, and Turkey decreased by 15%. And uh, we will have next year uh, a scope impact due to the remedies in three months last year. Uh, we, we sold uh, 100,000 tons um, with these yards of course, which we will not sell next year. 
for the non-ferrous metals, I would say that the scope impact is a bit lower uh, and the market changes uh, is 9.2%. Uh, in the revenue, you see that the revenue for ferrous, non-ferrous and uh, decreases more than the volume. It means that we have also uh, unit prices um, impact, uh, which is roughly 75 euro per ton for, uh, for the ferrous scrap, which is 17%. And for the non-ferrous metal, it's roughly 10% or 225 uh, euros per ton. And for the services, it's roughly stable, decreased by 1%. So the EBDA last year was a 445.8 million euros. We have a decrease in the gross margin or commercial margin by 134 million euros, uh, which it's both an impact of uh, less uh, volumes and lower unit margins, which we explained before. Uh, we have additional energy cost by 21.8 million uh, euros, out of them uh, 19 million electricity in France. And we also have savings, uh, staff cost, uh, mainly due to the saving after the eco acquisition. We have savings in maintenance, in, indeed in savings, but uh, it's due to less volumes because uh, the unit price of maintenance has increased. We have savings on insurance, uh, mainly due to the eco acquisition and also to um, uh, more uh, self insurance. And we had a non recurring environmental accrual last year, which we did not have this year. And we have other small impact, which we explain uh, 315.8 million euro EBDA this year. Uh, indeed, the Market conditions, they were the same in all the regions. Uh, we have a decreasing EBITDA uh, in all countries. Uh, of course, as we do most of our profitability in France, France decreased by uh, 103.7 million euros, which is a big number, but um, it's also the region where we were impacted by uh, electricity uh, increases, and, but it remains by far the most contributive, uh, the most profitable area. Uh, you see on the curve uh, right uh, in the blue curve uh, how the electricity price uh, changed last year. Uh, and we had to fix our electricity price by the end of October. It's about the red arrow um, because we requested for the French Arène, which is a reduced price for a part of our uh, electricity. But uh, we were not uh, at, the, at the end of the decrease in electricity price, which started uh, in September. Um, so, and next year, uh, we already have fixed our electricity price. And ex as explained before, uh, out of the 19 million uh, of increase this year, at least 15 will reverse uh, um, next year, of course, uh, based on the same volume. Service to municipalities, uh, revenue increased by 10.9%. EBDA increased by 20.7%. So the revenue is 183 million euro and the current EBDA is 30.5 million euro with an EBDA ratio of 16.6%. Uh, uh, what is important is uh, that business is a uh, current EBIT because uh, uh, the depreciation is paid in general by the, the revenue in the services uh, invoiced to the municipalities. So the current EBIT is 13.9 13 million euro, euro, which has an increase by 34% compared to prior year and uh, EBIT ratio of 7.6%, which is a good ratio for the, that type of business. And as we have a non-recurring expense of uh, 3.7 million euro, the EBIT is 10 million euro. So a few words about uh, that uh, business. Uh, we do the services. We do uh, household waste collection, door-to-door -door collection. Uh, we do some, uh, and also the separate flows, uh, glass, newspaper, uh, packaging, green waste, paper, cardboards. We do also some string cleaning, dump management, and sorting center management. 
We have uh, six, we operate in two countries in uh, 16 uh, sites, uh, 600 trucks and uh, roughly 60 contracts. You will see on the next page that the revenue is, is diversified, but uh, with the big uh, areas, we do 30 million in Canada, 30 million in, the par in Paris, 70 million in the Paris areas, in addition to Paris. Uh, 9 million in La Réunion, uh, 13 million in Normandy, 22 million in southeast of France, 9 million in west of France. Uh, some contracts will start next year, uh, in particular in Océan Indien, by roughly 10 million by year. Uh, some contracts will stop, uh, which is which our decision um, in the southeast of France. Uh, we will stop a contract which was roughly 17 million euro, but we did not contribute uh, to EBDA. It will improve our ratio when this contract will uh, stop. The good news also is that, uh, in generally, uh, the revision formulas, they cover inflation uh, cost, uh, the cost increase, uh, which is a uh, good news. Uh, the financial highlights for the uh, holding segment, we have revenue, which uh, we, it's mainly a cost invoice to the former multi-service division during the time that uh, they separate um, from the, uh, from the, they become autonomous in particular for IT. Uh, the current EBITDA is roughly the same than last year. And we have uh, 50 million positive impact uh, of the uh, multi-service contribution, uh, which is a non-recurring impact, of course, uh, contribution to to Elio. So uh, we do not want to go into details into the Elio results because uh, they have uh, disclosed uh, their results on the 22nd of November. They also hold a conference um, with uh, investors. What, what we just can say is that uh, the revenue is significantly increasing by 17%, with an organic growth by 11%, and uh, uh, scope effect by 6%, which is um, the impact of the uh, uh, Richbo multi service over uh, six months, 5.5 months, and also the deconsolidation of the preferred mills, uh, which they exited. The, prof the EBITDA, which is a kind of EBIT uh, adjusted, which is a, the, the criteria which they must, uh, mostly follow, uh, improve compared to last year at 1.1% compared to less than 1.1% last year, which is a 220 basis point uh, increase in one year. Um, but what we take into our result, it's a net result, which improved significantly compared to last year, but which is still negative, uh, mainly to non due to non-recurring impacts. You see that you have non 81 million non-recurring expense. So we consolidated on the line uh, equity consolidating companies for the first half, 24.36% uh, of the first half net income and 48.31% of the second half net consolidated uh, income, uh, which is uh, less 5.6 uh, for the first half and minus um, 33.8 million euros for the second half. In aggregate, it is minus 39.4 million. Out of that, 35.1 million, um, which a year, uh, classified itself as a non-recurring expense. So we can hope that with the turnaround of failure that uh, the non-recurring expense will disappear and then the failure recurring will translate uh, into something positive in the short term. Uh, a few words about our balance sheet. Um, so we, we were close to achieve a 1 billion equity uh, we miss it by 7 million euro, it will be for next year. Uh, our equity is 993 million euros. Uh, net debt is 773 million euros. Um, 
Indeed, um, most, most of the changes on the balance sheet relate to CapEx, uh, to exit of the multi-service uh, business uh, from our balance sheet. Uh, of course, more LEO uh, shares, which are on the line financial assets, and uh, a change in working capital requirement, which we will detail uh, on the next page. So our debt uh, increased by 120 million euro, roughly. Um, so we had an EBITDA by uh, 334.8 million euro, uh, non-recurring cash expense by 9 million euro. We expensed in CapEx 260 million euro, which is 79% of our EBITDA, which is, as we announced uh, already during our half year results presentation, a uh, significantly higher ratio um, than uh, the guidance, uh, which on a multi-year guidance of 50%. Uh, we will come uh, specifically uh, on that uh, capex later in the presentation. We had new IFRS on renewed IFRS leases amounting to 25.7 million euros. Finance cost, finance cost and in income tax we already discussed that. We have um, an increase in working capital requirement uh, by 61 million euro, which is explained by uh, two factors. Uh, the first one is uh, that we have a lower activity compared to prior year. And as a consequence, we do recognize less receivables uh, compared to, to prior year uh, with our non-recourse factoring agreement. And, uh, as a consequence, we it, we have an increase in debt, and we have also more uh, uh, less account payables. Dividends, it was in the first year, as well as asset disposal, and the other impact are minor. Uh, our leverage ratio is 2.31, uh, which is still good, but higher than uh, last year, and coverage ratio is uh, 11 times, which is very good. A source of financing and liquidity, we will go uh, very fast on that. Um, we have no major finance issue in the coming years. We have good visibility on uh, our financing uh, lines. We have good liquidity. Uh, we could draw 380 million more on our lines, uh, which we will not do, of course, but we have good liquidity. Uh, on the next page, you will see that uh, our main lines uh, our green bonds goes into uh, 28. Uh, our um, syndicated loans goes into 27. We have um, a, a, Europe, a loan with the European Bank, which goes into uh, to, uh, 2032. Uh, the line which um, ends first is our factoring line, which ends at the end of December 24. But each year we extend it by one year, and in the coming weeks we will extend it until end of December 25. Uh, about the capex, uh, as explained, we we committed uh, roughly to 260 million capex, most of it in the uh, recycling division, 247 million euro. Uh, we, you have a split uh, of the main area of capex in, at the chart in the lower um, left part of the slide. Um, I will not. The only one I will go into detail is the new sorting line in niche business for 38 million euros. Uh, we will show you a picture of that uh, in the next pages. Um, the reason uh, for this high amount of capex, uh, due to the excellent results in uh, 21 and 22. We committed to uh, more capex in order to gain advance uh, in the renewal of tr trains and trucks, which are 28 and 11 million euros, which is uh, in particular for cranes, it's not a recurring numbers. Uh, at the end of 22, we had delay in capex delivery due, short due to shortage at our suppliers, uh, which were impacted by the war in Ukraine, which created, uh, you remember, logistics issue. Uh, we wanted ECO, uh, to upgrade uh, Echo Yards uh, to the Richbourg production standard. So we change some shears, we do some uh, concrete, uh, 
and uh, so is, we, there is a part of the capex uh, which is due to that. And uh, the acquisition of the Richbourg Espana, which is still uh, recent, uh, and Ecor, it creates new opportunities for a dedicated starting line, uh, which will bring up additional profitability for the group. As you know, we try to keep more added value in the group uh, and to, to, from the beginning, from the collection to, to sell uh, products which are um, with high added value and which are not, I would say, byproducts. Uh, we already did that with uh, um, uh, refining uh, for aluminium, for lead, but uh, we started uh, three years ago with the uh, chopping uh, copper, and uh, you will see that we have installed a second uh, on the left, uh, right part of the side, a new line for shredding copper aluminium in uh, Ecopon in the north, which started uh, operating in October. A new treatment line for the cold fridges, what we call the wheel in bonneuil sur marne close to Paris, and we will, um, which uh, started also to operate in October. Um, we we replaced uh, one of our major shredders close to Lyon in Saint Pierre de Chandieu, uh, and we installed a more powerful uh, shredder, which started also operating in October. Uh, not 100 percent, but started in October. And we also invest in uh, solid recovered fuel uh, in line in Marignan, and uh, there will be a second one in uh, Lyon in, uh, in the shredder of Saint Pierre de Chandieu uh, within a few months. Another um, significant uh, in capex is uh, the non-ferrous uh, sorting uh, line in Coulombier, which is the upper part of the of the uh, uh, picture which will enable to better sort, uh, in particular, aluminium and to sell aluminium at higher prices to uh, customer, which will be able to use it directly. Uh, and it, this aluminium is uh, in, in accordance with uh, specifications uh, of, the, of, of the customers, which uh, require very uh, accurate uh, percentage of each metal, I would say. A few words about the outlook. Um, a word about uh, the cyber attack which we incurred uh, on December, uh, on November 10th, 23. Um, as we were informed very rapidly after this uh, cyber attack, all, ne all networks were immediately disconnected. Uh, in depth analysis did not reveal up to now uh, stolen data or ransomware. Um, we reinforce the cybersecurity of the network and laptop. All critical software are now operating and the number of laptops which are connected to the network is increasing each day. Uh, for the time being, we are still operating, uh, I would say, uh, on an internal basis and the external links with the will be opened at a later stage uh, within a, a few days. Uh, so we are confident for the medium term uh, because uh, uh, you see that there is a number of projects of new electric arc furnace uh, steel mills which are planned to be uh, built in Europe in the coming uh, years. Why is this project? Because uh, uh, in the transition uh, towards, uh, I would say, um, less uh, carbon emissions uh, or greenhouse gas emissions, a blast furnace, uh, some of them will be replaced by electric arc furnace, and uh, which is a good opportunity for us because uh, it, there will be additional requirements for scrap uh, when they will operate. Um, the counterpart of that will likely be that it will be more difficult to export scrap out of the UECD uh, because uh, so they will be consumed uh, in uh, in Europe. So this is for the medium term. We are very confident. For the short term, Abderrahman Al uh at the beginning of this presentation explained why we are confident for the short term. So you see the, the reasons. Uh, volumes have reached a support level. Uh, 
despite depressed economic environment, the ferrous uh, scrap price and also non-ferrous metal metal price start to increase again. The new starting lights will bring additional value. Electricity price will decrease in uh, we each day we tick uh, <laughs> the, a day box. Yeah, it will decrease in uh, three weeks. Uh, service to municipality is uh, resilient and profitable and will start new contracts. And the Richbourg will benefit from Elior to Noram. Uh, for the following reasons, we target an EBITDA amounting to at least 350 million euros ne for next year and with CAPEX not exceeding 50% of the EBITDA. I think after this uh, long presentation, we will switch uh, to the Q&A. Um, yeah, uh, so our next AGM will be on uh, January 30th and the half year result on May 29th. You can, uh, you can go um, on, if you want to, to ask some Q&A, you, uh, there is a chat button and you can ask some questions. Um, so, I see. Uh, one question uh, in, in, a, in a context which is complex, uh, the, is the group uh, the Richbourg not too, does, does uh, the group the Richbourg not depend too much on the improvement of the earlier results? Um, it's not our uh, view. Uh, we are a strategic investor in Elior, but we do not control Elior. We expect both uh, Elior as an investor, uh, Elior results to, to improve, but we also uh, expect our results to improve uh, for the reasons which we uh, just have disclosed before. Uh, we do not, it is, it's sure I would say that uh, uh, your results will improve uh, and our results, we expected them also to improve, but we, didn't, we do not consider that we are uh, too dependent on uh, uh, your improvement. And the improvement has been, you know, demonstrated, you know, in the year end numbers that have been published. But also, I mean, for the first two months, you know, I, I know that it's only October and November. OK, I mean, the, the perspectives are good, so we are confident that uh, the turn off of Elior will uh, take place. There was a previous question about uh, the hypothesis of, of, of our EBDA. OK, what uh, we can say since April, May uh, 2023, we have noticed that we have reached the bottom that I mean, our volume is more and less the same. And also, you know, the margins are always the same and the results are always the same. Since September, September, October, I wouldn't say November because we don't have a very clear idea because of our cyber attack. Uh, we have seen that our volumes are slightly increasing. OK, so we think that we have reached, you know, uh, a bottom and we can only improve uh, in terms of volume. This was not factored in our projected EBDA. Our projected EBDA, it's the savings in um, in energy costs, okay, which we calculate, we estimate at uh, around 19 to 20 million. Uh, usually on a, a full year basis, it's 24 million. But as we are, I mean, our uh, physical year is uh, nine months, I mean, on the this calendar year, it will be only 19, 19 million. And we have also all these new uh, activities that we have started, you know, um, effective October, that will will generate a BDA and will add to the bottom line. So this is, it's very very it's a very simple approach, okay. And if we have the chance, if we are lucky, that I mean the volumes pick up a little bit, it will be even more, you know, just. Uh, Uh, there is a question um, about the energy, energy cost. cost. Yeah, uh, the energy cost is fully uh, uh, edged for 2024. Uh, gas or, or, or energy, electricity, both. And and 25 is uh, not not hedged. No, so 25 not.
Feel free to ask questions uh, if you want. Uh, for the time being, we. Uh, yes, uh, there, there was a question, but it disappeared. It was about capex, but it disappeared very quickly. So, uh, so I, I read the question. Huh? Congratulations for your good results. The drop in capex seems important between 24 and 23. Some capex were pushed into 23. Some projects from tw for 2024 were finally cancelled given your current level of debt. Uh, what we can say about the capex, uh, I mean, this year has been uh, uh, a very special year because we, as uh, Pierre said, we had to bring up uh, GDE yards to Durish board standards. Okay, so there were uh, different investments. OK, there was also a tender from eco organisms about, uh, you know, for example, treatments of uh, broilers, you know, Ballon de Chaude. Um, these suppose an investment of 40 million. OK, it was a tender and we have one, you know, three locations. So it was for us a window and you, know, you, you, you take it or you, you leave it. So we took it. That, that's another another uh, big capex. And we were also looking for to diversify our revenue stream. Always being in the same, you know, in our main business, always recycling scrap metal. So what we are doing, it's just opening, you know, new facilities, things that we were not do to keep the added value, you know, inside the group. So this is why, you know, this year is a very high amount, but next year it will be a lower uh, amount it, unless there is, you know, a new project or new tender or something like like that. But uh, we are confident that all our project, uh, you know, new activities will be profit uh, profitable uh, and uh, and we are able, you know, if there is, I don't know, any uh, adverse events, you know, in uh, in the uh, in the economy, we can also lower, you know, the amount of capex next year. I, I would just uh, uh, add that uh, um, in our business, uh, most of the capex we can we can choose uh, the date at which we commit them. The, there is no um, no no pressure. Our our industrial tool is in. Uh, very good shape has been renewed uh, regularly in recent years. So if we want, uh, the, the, if we want to to postpone something, there is no problem to do it. But uh, the, we have a few um, uh, capex that we are compelled to do. Is there another question? I, I see wage cost inflation for uh, financial year 20, 2024. Okay. Oh, I, I mean, I would say that, uh, for example, for our uh, cost, I mean, we have already finished our uh, uh, yearly negotiation and roughly speaking, our labor costs has increased by 4%. Uh, and I will take the next one. Okay. Uh, do do our debt covenants uh, include a year uh, debt? No, it uh, it doesn't, uh, because we do not consolidate uh, a year. We we explained uh, why in uh, previously, uh, because uh, due to the characteristics of the governance agreement, which was signed on the, on the April 18th, um, we do not have control on uh, a year based on the IFRS rules. And uh, as a consequence, we do not consolidate the balance sheet, uh, the full balance sheet of failure, and neither its full PNL. We just have the share um, of, I would say, our share in equity of failure in one line of the balance sheet, but we don't have the assets, we don't have the debt, and we don't have the revenue, we don't have the EBDA. So the, uh, we don't have the, the debt of failure uh, on our balance sheet. And our, as our uh, covenants are calculated based on our balance sheet, it's not included. Okay, I would take the one of uh, the cyber attack. Okay, 
just to let you know, uh, obviously we are insured on the end of the cyber attack. I mean, I will tell you every and all the details. Our premium is uh, 172,000 uh, euros. Our uh, 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 yeah. co coverage is uh, 5 million and we have a deductible of 1.5 million. OK, uh, to be honest, the direct cost of the cyber attack is something that we estimate around 500,000 uh, uh, euros. OK, but there will be a lot of expenses. I mean, uh, based on uh, reinforcing our security, uh, updating, you know, all the servers and stuff. So is it linked, you know, to the cyber attack? Is it something that is not linked? It's very difficult. In, in terms of activity, in terms of activity, we it's very difficult for us to say today what was the impact. We estimate that there is some loss in volume during the month of November, uh, but it shouldn't exceed five or six percent. It shouldn't exceed. But I am not sure when I, I, I mean, as I am talking to you right now, I'm not sure because we are starting, we're starting the system. We will have all the data in two or three weeks and we can have a very good estimation about the impact of the cyber attack on our activity. But I mean, speaking with the people, there was a slight decrease, but it's not that sure. OK, so I'm sorry not to give you now all the details, but uh, this is where we are today. And but I'm sure that in two weeks time or three weeks time, we will have the, the full impact of the cyber attack. Uh, I will take uh, the next one, which was which is about the impact of the multi-service uh, divestment on sales. Uh, last year, it was uh, 940 million euros uh, revenue. Uh, indeed, it was the the, the share uh, of multi-service in uh, in the group revenue, but the multi-service revenue itself uh, was a bit higher, uh, roughly 10 mi 20 million because there was uh, intra-segment sales which were cancelled in the uh, consolidated, consolidated financial statement. Indeed, it was a little less than 1 billion euro. OK, I am taking the, the one yeah. about uh, renewable energies. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, a lot of groups have started you now to produce their own electricity and uh, Durishbur also is on the same line. For the recent, you know, capex that we have realized, realized, uh, achieved uh, one in Bonneuil, we have, uh, 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 we are going to start, you know, uh, the roof of our warehouse in October 2024 uh, with photovoltaic. I don't know if it's, we use the, the the word in 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 English, photovoltaic, you know, to produce not all the of electricity that we need, but parts of the electricity that we need. And it's the same in saint pierre de chandieu in Lyon. OK, so all the new yards we already include in our capex, you know, the production of renewable electricity. For the old yards, uh, it's a little bit more difficult because, you know, the structure, for example, of the warehouse is not that solid enough you know, to support uh, photovoltaic, the weight of the photovoltaic. So it is difficult, but we this is something that we have also included in our our uh, mindset and as as soon as as long we can achieve it, we do it. Uh, I will take the, the next one. Uh, if there will be some um, revenue synergy uh, for the Richbourg uh, due to its investment in Elior, uh, contact with the municipalities and so on. Uh, no, these are two separate groups. It's, a, it's I would say it's a financial investment. Uh, we do not expect a cross selling due to these are not the same business. Diamond, do you want the next one? Yeah, uh, I mean. This is why we are optimists right now because you know the level of uh, scrap prices is good. Okay. However, uh, you know all this, the inventories everywhere are very low, and as soon as there is a small demand, you know the prices pick up. So we think that this is something that could last over the upcoming months, and it will benefit. Uh, will benefit from it.
I think we have answered all the questions. Uh, unless one additional question comes very soon, otherwise we will uh, close the this uh, results presentation. And uh, so we thank you very much for attending, and uh, we we wish you a, a good uh, holiday season. Mm. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.